All right, in this very brief tutorial, we're going to go over how you can get your hands on the unofficial Flash Player 11 uh, standalone executable. And then we're going to go over um, how you can get that set up in your Flash CS5 IDE so that you can build and test all within the IDE without having to pop open a browser and all that kind of uh, not so standard uh, kind of stuff when you're developing. So first of all, in the video description, there should be a link uh, where you can go and you can download the binaries for the uh, unofficial standalone player. Um, just a note, um, please read the readme file that's included in the zip um, because it has some important legal disclaimers. Um, it's important to know that this executable does not include the flash runtime. It does not include anything that is owned by or copyrighted by Adobe, but it's rather a Windows executable that is just an interface to the uh, Adobe Flash Player controls. Uh, so you must already have the incubator build installed on your system in order for this executable to work. Anyway, so with all that said, assuming that you've downloaded the file and you've got it unzipped, I'm just going to open that folder so you see what your contents look like of that file. Uh, basically what you really need are the standalone executable and the two DLLs that accompany it. Again, these DLLs, although you know, despite what the, it might say in the name, uh, these are not uh, copied Adobe libraries. These are rather libraries that were automatically generated by Visual Studio in order to properly interface with the Adobe Flash control. So anyway, so you're gonna need to uh, copy those two files in order to get them set up in your Flash CS5 um, development environment. So if we just go ahead and Control C or right click and copy and navigate over to where you have uh, Adobe Flash CS5 installed. Uh, just bear with me. CS5. And basically if you just do a quick search in the root directory for debug, you'll find the debug folder. And flash player debugger.exe is what we're going to be replacing. Now, just to explain for those who might not already be putting it together, to explain why we're doing this, I'm going to open a sample CS5 project that targets um, flash player 11, the incubator build. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to build and test this application. So if I do Control shift enter you can see we get an error here, verify error, uh, blah blah blah. It's basically because it's the Flash Player 10.1 runtime trying to process this Swift that is targeted for uh, Flash Player 11. So that's why we have to replace this Flash Player debugger executable and uh, how we're going to do that, again, is by copying this, the customized unofficial standalone executable uh, and renaming it to Flash Player Debugger. Before doing that, please, uh, please, just so you don't screw up your install, uh, make a copy, a backup of your debug directory inside Flash CS5, uh, the install directory. Okay, so I'm going to paste these contents in. I'm just going to give an underscore in front of the original Flash Player Debugger. I'm going to rename the Flash Incubator standalone to Flash Player Debugger. And now if I go back over into Flash CS5 and do a Control Shift Enter, you can see that we can now test our Flash Player 11 targeted uh, Swifts right inside of our uh, regular development environment without having to open a browser or anything like that. So that's it. Um, yeah, any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, there is contact information on the Google Code website uh, where you downloaded the executable from. Thanks.